Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The case has been returned from the laboratory. We have had the posterior teeth cast, and we have our porcelain on these teeth in a biscuit bake. We now have the case back so that we can go to the mouth and trim the porcelain the way we'd like so we have this in a biscuit bake. The bridge on this side will have to be soldered to the cuspid here after we do the baking or the uh, glazing of the porcelain. If you are going to solder after the porcelain is baked, you have to wait till after we get the glaze on these before uh, we can do the soldering. The anterior teeth we contoured the last time and they have been glazed, so now we can go in and check in the mouth our final ascetics. If we wanted to do any staining or characterization of these anterior teeth, we would do it at this time. But the anterior teeth we contoured last time for the feminine characteristics and now they have been glazed this bridge, mandibular bridge, is a unit casting. It is better to do a unit casting because if you wanted to stain or characterize this after it was glazed, uh, you could do so because the, you could heat this up to uh, melt the glaze. If you solder after you have glazed it, then you cannot characterize or stain. The porcelain, uh, placing the porcelain on the teeth, we've modified a little bit. This is a young girl, rather nice looking, and we've tried to camouflage the show of gold. So as you see here, there was no occlusal contact in the mesial pit area of the bicuspids, so we had the laboratory technician extend the porcelain into the mesial pit area. So that as we look from an anterior view, the porcelain hides the gold in this area, and yet we have the gold for our occlusal contact, so that the, there isn't so much gold showing on those bicuspids. We have changed the porcelain in the uh, maxillary crowns. Uh, to camouflage the gold a little bit too. As you see here, we have extended the gold, or the porcelain, over the occlusal surface so that we have porcelain cusps contacting. Now, we can do this if you do not have any occlusal contact going over this margin. We have waxed the case so that it will function and clear out without contacting these porcelain areas. If you're going to have a cusp go over the porcelain gold margin, then you're going to fracture a facing. But with the proper design of the occlusion, you can carry this porcelain, as you can see, onto these cusp areas so that it will hide the show of gold. To check the castings and the work back from the laboratory, we want to make sure that we have maintained our centric. Check to make sure that the pin is down on the incisal table, and the condyles are down on the condyle balls. To make sure that we have maintained our occlusion, you want to make sure that the dies are seated well in the master models. In the waxing procedures, a die could collect wax under the base so that in the Final occlusion, we would have the die elevated out of the master model and the occlusion would not be right. So make sure that all of the wax is off from the base of the die. We also would check at this time the accuracy of the margin, margins and the casting. Go around and make sure that the casting extends out to the margin that we have designated for the laboratory. Now on these posterior crowns, we use a gold collar 
This is more compatible with the tissue. In the anterior part of the mouth, we wouldn't be able to use this because this would be uh, obvious from the acidic standpoint. Now, I wouldn't finish the margins down uh, too closely at this stage of the laboratory procedure. If we were going to do a remount, you might damage the margins if you tried to thin them out too much. So we check the dies, the individual fit of the casting onto the die. Make sure that there are no irregularities inside the casting. These are, should all be sandblasted and you individually adjust each casting so that it goes down on the die. Once you're assured that all of the castings are seated properly on the dies and all the dies are in their correct position in the master model, then we can verify the occlusion. We previously adjusted the anterior teeth so that they would maintain our contact. So with our shim stock, we check to make sure that we've maintained contact with our anterior teeth. Now, how far we go with the occlusion at this state depends on what your plans are going to be. We can go ahead and adjust the occlusion as finely as we uh, can on this mounting because we have done a transfer of our dies and we can go back to the mouth with a fairly well-adjusted occlusion provided the temporaries have maintained the case. However, if the case has been in the laboratory a long time, this one has been going on six months, in the laboratory procedures, we could have some change of the teeth, so we are going to plan almost routine in this case to do a remount of the castings. So we now go to the mouth, try in all of the castings, verify the accuracy of the margin, go ahead and modify the porcelain, and send it back to the laboratory for soldering of the bridges and glazing of the porcelain. Then when we get it back, we will do our remount procedures. We now place the restorations in the mouth. And the first thing that we would like to verify is the accuracies of the margins. This should be no problem, provided we verified our dies with the bonnets when we be uh, checked out the case before we sent it to the lab, but it's still a good idea to go around and check these. Then what we would like to do now is to contour the restorations and the crowns and the porcelain to give a good gingival environment here. You can see here we've got quite a bit of, of a bulge in this area. This one's not too bad this contour we would like to have. The under contour is uh, better for the gingival tissue than an over contour. So this is why we have it returned in the biscuit bake that we will take this crown now and start working down the porcelain. Improving the contour of that restoration. Trimming the crown or contouring the crown, we want to make sure that we wind up with a concavity here on the proximal areas. Remember that we have a gingival papilla that needs to uh, live in that area, so we would like to develop a concavity for that papilla in the area. Also, we would like to cut down any over contour in this mouth particularly. 
she has a very sensitive gingival tissue that responds to the slightest bit of plaque, so we would want to eliminate any undercuts and have as self-cleansing an area as we can. In checking the restoration, you want to make sure that it goes down all the way, make sure that it fits the tooth the same way as it fits the die. If your temporaries haven't been keeping the tissue out of the road, then you may have to retract the tissue. You want to check your contacts to make sure that the uh, contacts are not holding the restoration up, but you can see what we're trying to do with this contour here now is to make a nice even contour for that restoration. So we'd go back and each one of the crowns fit it to the area, opening up the proximal area so that we can have a good area for the gingival tissue. On the maxillary, you can see here that these are quite a bit over-contoured. Uh, this bridge has not been soldered yet, so we want to contour this for the shape. We want to adjust the tissue contact portion of this so that it touches the tissue lightly and recontour all of this porcelain for um, before the bridge is soldered. So we'll go ahead now and reshape these porcelain areas on the ponics. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.